Hello and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Ohio students sponsored by the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you so much for joining us. We are in the Columbus College of Art and Design session today. I wanted to cover a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You will see that there is a Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule of sessions at oacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, oacac.org. I'm going to turn it now over to Ellen Ellis, our presenter today. Enjoy your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited to be here today um, and share with some of you a little bit about what we have to offer at Columbus College of Art and Design, or we call it CCAD for short. Um, I do have a presentation I'm excited to share with you all, some great images. You don't just have to look at my face this whole time, but rather uh, the faces of our students um, and their work and what our campus is like as well. Um, so, like I said, my name is Ellen Ellis. As an admissions counselor, my job is to help students, uh, particularly interested in visual arts, uh, navigate that college search, um, comparing art-focused institutions to uh, larger or broader university options with, you know, a, a art school or an art department within, um, and kind of what's the right fit for you and your goals. Uh, I also love to talk with students about their portfolios, which is commonly a required component of applications um, at art programs, um, and also financial aid, scholarships, um, so on and so forth. So that's really you know, my primary role um, and responsibility as an admissions counselor. I myself come from an arts background. Um, I studied uh, fashion design and worked in the fashion design industry for a number of years before moving over into higher education. Um, and so this is a really personal um, field for me. Oftentimes the students I talk with and connect with, um, I really relate to the, the paths they're walking and the choices they're making. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about um, CCAD and what we have to offer our students here. So we're located in Columbus, Ohio. So right in the middle of our state here, uh, we are an urban downtown campus. So we have about a dozen buildings um, kind of nestled in about a three by three uh, city block area. Um, we're located right next door to the Columbus Museum of Art, uh, the main branch of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. Uh, we have uh, a number of great parks and green spaces in the city nearby. Um, and so it is a, a really awesome, just kind of hubbub, energetic environment for students to learn and live within. And we really are our own little kind of downtown neighborhood, if you will. So I've shared a little bit about me and what I do, but I'd love to learn more about you out there. If you uh, would like to share some more in-depth info about um, particular areas you're interested in, uh, maybe even get started scheduling a portfolio review, like I mentioned, or an appointment, you can certainly scan this QR code before you. It'll take you to a little uh, info flyer where you can tell us that more in-depth information about yourself that will help connect us or rather connect you with a counselor on our side that can help you um, start uh, having these conversations. At a glance, um, I kind of described what our campus uh, looks like location-wise, um, but otherwise we are one of the oldest art and design uh, focused institutions in the country. Um, we're over 140 years old, so we've been doing this for a long time. Um, and I always like to say that doesn't make us old fashioned at what we do. In fact, we have a number of fantastic cutting edge uh, facilities and studios featuring um, top notch industrial grade equipment, which I'll kind of talk a little bit more in, um, in a few slides. Um, so it is, you know, an institution that's founded um, and has a long tradition of loving and standing up for the arts and opening up doors to students interested in that field. Uh, we are about 1,100 total students, undergraduate and graduate. Um, if you're trying to understand what that looks and feels like, a number can feel very kind of static. Um, you know, if you're comparing us to a big state or public school like an OSU, um, we would be much smaller than that, right? Campuses like those are tens of thousands of students. Um, but we are, you know, just a fraction of that. If you compare us to just other art-focused um, and design institutions, that kind of piece of the pie, 
of the, the kind of college world, if you will, uh, we're kind of right in the middle. There are some art schools that are a little smaller, some that are just a little bit bigger, um, but we're kind of right there in the middle. And what that translates into on, in a daily experience or lifestyle for students is a very tight knit community um, arts focused uh, life and lifestyle. And our uh, students get to experience a primarily studio style curriculum. So two thirds of the classes you take here are a studio style, actively creating, problem solving, making, doing, um, and you know within your major and within some core uh, foundation studio classes. Um, but they're small class sizes. You know, there is no kind of stadium style lecture seating here with hundreds of students um, and no one ever even knows your name. Here, whether it's a, a liberal arts course or a studio course, uh, your faculty will know your name. They'll even really kind of start to engage in relationships with you where they learn about where you're coming from and where you want to go in the future and helping you navigate um, learning all these you know, cool new mediums and, and techniques and skills and tools. Um, so we're really about a community um, relationships um, and, and helping students um, through their time here at CCAD. Um, that being said, to be a small school, we do still welcome students, um, not just from Ohio, but certainly neighboring states and further afield. So California, uh, New York, Chicago, Texas, Florida. We have students coming to us from all across the country and even from around the world. So if you're looking for a college experience that will still open up um, opportunities to explore um, relationships with new people and broaden your horizons and make new friendships and learn new things. Um, we, we have that too. Now, like I mentioned, we are a visually arts focused college. So we have 11 majors uh, within a variety of areas. Um, some of us, you know, uh, might be focused more in kind of what, what we might call more traditional art paths. So fine arts, illustration, maybe photography or film. Um, some of you might be interested in more kind of cutting edge digital uh, fields like animation, game art and design, which is our newest major uh, just started this fall. Um, or some of you may be more kind of problem solvers and design thinkers, which we'll talk more about. And so maybe something like industrial design or fashion might be up your alley. And beyond choosing a major, we want you, we want to help you rather um, kind of customize that academic learning experience you have here at CCAD. So you'll have so many electives that you can choose from and you can use those electives to explore a wide variety of interests. You could take a creative writing class and a, um, and a watercolor class and a glass blowing class and, and really just kind of experiment and, and, and play to your heart's desire while learning. Um, if you'd rather kind of give some structure or a theme to those electives, if you will, that's really where a minor comes in. Um, and that's kind of the best way I've found to describe what a minor is to students. Um, it's kind of a great way to explore a secondary passion you may have. Um, it's a great way to kind of uh, gain some additional skills in addition to your major to really help you prepare for the exact type of career you want to have. Um, so we have students interested, you know, maybe in art as it applies to helping others. So art therapy, art education, um, or social practice. We have students who might want to own their own brand or label um, or small business one day, which we have um, a business minor. We're one of the only art and design colleges that offers a true business minor. Uh, maybe you love storytelling visually and verbally, then certainly you might have interest in our copywriting um, or rather our creative writing uh, minor. So lots of options here for students um, to explore interests um, that are unique to them. And so when I'm you know, having conversations like this with students, um, whether it's a presentation like this or kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, in a more kind of appointment meeting uh, scenario, uh, one of the questions I always ask first is, what do you want to create every day? What do you love making every day? Um, what brings you joy? What challenges you but doesn't burn you out? Um, a lot of us as creatives have primary passions and secondary passions. Um, and love drawing, but also love painting and, and photography too. So it's interesting to kind of have these conversations um, when it comes to what do I think I want to do one day? What do I think I want to be one day? What major should I go into? This is kind of the, the best place to start. And oftentimes I hear students kind of just describe um, general interests and things they like to do. And I think that that's great. And so that's actually how I'm going to talk about our majors with you today. Uh, rather than one by one by one, I'm going to kind of talk about majors um, in little groupings or kind of common themes um, that I hear students describe to me. So if we were getting to talk together and you said, oh, I love characters, I love storytelling, 
Um, I love games. I love um, kind of inventing entire worlds, um, particularly make me fantasy and narratives. Um, then I would highly suggest checking out majors like animation, um, comics and narrative practice, uh, illustration, and as I mentioned, our, our newest major game art and design. Now, all the work that you see on the screen before you is student produced by real students in you know, real assignments uh, in our studios. Um, so you'll see some animation stills here from a, um, from a feature that a student uh, developed. Number two is kind of a, a single page example from our Spitball Comics Anthology. Uh, if you're interested in comics and you're on Instagram, you should definitely check out Spitball Comics. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks and feels like um, in just a moment. Uh, number three over here is a beautiful uh, digital 3D illustration rendering by a student. You can see it's really kind of character and environmental driven. Um, and so, you know, students here in these majors in particular have some incredible studio facilities. They have access to um, multiple um, computer studios with the Wacom drawing screen tablets. Um, in our animation department, we have um, the only one of its kind in the country stop motion experimental animation design studio with over a dozen individual filming boobs. So if you're really into things like um, Nightmare Before Christmas, Corpse Bride, Kubo, um, Box Trolls, stuff like that, that, that is that style of animation and we teach that. Um, again, game art and design. Um, we are talking, you know, AAA gaming style, uh, but we're also talking um, board games and apps and um, educational games. So it's kind of, you know, interesting that in each major, you're going to see a theme as I present. Um, it's not just helping students become an animator or becoming an illustrator, but each major, each industry has so many individual little pockets and corners and facets um, that students can find their own niche in and have dozens of possible career options within. And that is what we see students taking away from our programs. So CCAD is going to help prepare you for careers that you might expect, um, but also for some careers you might not expect. Um, so I've got some great alumni examples here. Um, Dan Scanlon uh, got his start in our animation program, and he uh, graduated and uh, began working at Disney Pixar as a storyboard artist for like the Cars and Toy Story series. Um, but now he's at like a vice president, creative director level, um, and his most recent project was Onward, which was released um, just this past spring. Uh, Katura Bobo, really different, um, an independent illustrator and artist. She um, draws these beautiful illustrations for children's book. You'll see this uh, book cover here, I Am Enough by author Grace Byers. Katura is passionate about um, drawing and illustrating and featuring um, children and families from a diverse um, area of backgrounds um, and ethnicities and helping students or rather children see themselves in the stories they read. Um, like I mentioned, you might end up at a place or in a career you didn't maybe think was possible. We've had students intern at NASA, kind of crazy, you wouldn't think about that in art design, but they need help actually telling the stories and providing educational tools via animations and illustrations and games to educators so that students um, across the country and around the world can learn more about what NASA does um, specifically in their missions. Um, we have product designers at Lego. So you never know, like I said, really where your passion for art and making will take you in this field. Um, Shay Beagle and Logan Schmidt, also uh, fairly independent artists and designers. Logan is an illustrator. He really pulls inspiration from nature, as you can certainly see in his art. Um, but he really got into the, we have a really good music scene here in Columbus, lots of concerts and bands coming through. Um, and so he started networking. And so he uh, draws illustrations um, for band merchandise. So for like Ray LaMontagne, Dave Matthews Band and others, um, really pretty cool gig if you think about it. And then Shay Beagle, she got her start in that Spitball Comics anthology that I mentioned. And that's a special topics course uh, where students are partnered with professional writers, publishers of comics, um, sequential art. And so they really get to start to build that network and learn from that professional partner and get some great feedback. And so it was really during that project that Shay kind of got the seed, the idea for Moonstruck. And after she graduated, that actually became a full, fully published series, comic book series, sequential series. Um, and it's called Moonstruck. 
Uh, and it's a really fun fantasy series about kind of a barista by day turned werewolf by night. So if you want to check it out, their handles are down there at the bottom. Um, and they are a lot of fun to read. If, um, you know, what I was describing in that last grouping of majors doesn't really apply to you or resonate with you, maybe you're more of a maker, a problem solver, uh, maybe even interested where science or math meets art. Uh, if you love uh, branding, merchandising, um, spaces and products um, that kind of impact people on a daily basis, then I would certainly encourage you to explore areas like interior design, uh, industrial design, fashion design, or even advertising and graphic design. Um, again, the pictures before you feature work by students. So this really, you know, here in the middle, this beautiful collection of menswear and women's wear uh, by one of our senior students um, two years ago. Uh, you've got here again, a 3D digital rendering of this great public um, interior space. In advertising and graphic design, students are exploring much more than merely a logo or a graphic tee um, or a billboard. We're talking user experience, user interface design, web design, app design, and multi-dimensional multi-media um, branding um, because brands really are so much more than a print ad in a magazine um, these days, right? You've got to hit social media, you've got to hit web, you've got to have a website. Um, so graphic design students are being introduced and taught across a lot of different categories. This picture number one um, up in the corner, you might be wondering, what is that? Are those like half made shoes? <laughs> kind of what's going on there? Um, so this is actually a, a special topics course where fashion and industrial design students um, got to uh, learn from and with and alongside um, some accessory and footwear designers based in Chile. The brand is called Citrana Shoes. They're primarily a leather goods company. Um, and so students really got to learn from these professionals, like what, uh, not just how a shoe is made, but what is your customer value? What are they looking for in a shoe? Uh, what makes quality footwear and how are they made and produced? Um, so it was a really great opportunity for students to learn alongside a, a really, um, awesome company, but they also got to travel and study abroad. And so for about 10 days, they were actually in Chile uh, making and prototyping the shoes they designed um, alongside these really fantastic artisans. Um, so really kind of a, a once in a lifetime type experience there. Um, and I always find students in these, um, in these majors and industries to be real hustlers. Um, they have um, a passion, maybe to work for a big company like Abercrombie & Fitch or J. Crew, which we certainly have alumni at, Ralph Lauren even, um, or Saatchi & Saatchi, which is a huge advertising company, I believe based out of Chicago. Um, but we also have students really interested, like I said, in kind of making their own way, paving their own path, uh, blazing their own trail. So you have students like um, Lolly Stamps. Uh, she actually graduated out of the advertising and graphic design major and worked locally um, at a multimedia design agency, but uh, really recently dove into committing herself to her ceramics practice and creating products uh, with really interesting solutions, all handmade. Her mugs are actually sold on Madewell. I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the clothing brand Madewell, but they also sell homemade goods like that. Um, we have uh, Gunis, which is a handbag brand started by an alumni of ours. She was very much into finding a better way in fashion. Um, she is vegan. She is passionate about sustainability um, and having goods made the right way. So she decided to take her, you know, the, the techniques that she had learned in fashion design and in industrial design and apply them to developing a better way to make handbags. Um, we also have alumni designing um, cars, designing toys. Um, that's really what industrial design is. Industrial design sounds kind of funny. You might think it's like about heavy machinery or something. And you certainly could go into automotive or even motorcycle type design work. Um, but it is really everything. Uh, my husband is an industrial designer and he, uh, he does diapers, he does toys, he does shoes, he does <laughs> cutlery and product and packaging design. So it is a really uh, vast and exciting industry um, that, like I said, if you're interested in problem solving, um, you know, kind of partner alongside your art and love of drawing and such, um, you, you could really find the, um, a great career. Susanna Madrid is also a really kind of independent uh, individual. She got her start in our fashion program and then moved to Europe to pursue her master's. 
Um, and it was really there that she kind of found her place. And so out of Italy, she now designs her own high-end footwear shoe brand. Again, her handles are there. If you want to check those out, they are really beautiful. Audrey Stamen was much more of a kind of a, a digital and design and brand branding type thinker um, that graduated from our advertising and graphic design program. And she really took full advantage of opportunities, not just in the classroom, but out of the classroom. We actually have our own in-house student design agency. Um, and so students uh, from the photography, graphic design, illustration, even fine arts, um, film and video, uh, students from across lots of different majors are employed. Uh, it is a paid position. They produce all of our uh, branding work, um, which I'm always like really proud of and, and happy to see, but they also take on additional outside clients um, and opportunities. And it really is kind of these types of projects that really help expand student portfolios um, and help students access internships and postgraduate full-time employment opportunities. And Audrey's work was actually entered into the Addies, which is kind of like, you know, the Oscars are to film or the Grammys are to music, the Addies are to like the advertising and graphic design world. And there's this a student competition category and a professional category. And our, um, our student design agency, as well as our graphic design faculty regularly enter student work into this competition. They help pay the fees to enter them into this competition. Um, and Audrey actually walked away with multiple awards in the professional category. It's not the student category, the professional category. So if you're looking for a career in graphic design, CCAD is a great place to get your start. So this last grouping of majors would be for those of you, hopefully, um, if I haven't described anything that really kind of um, makes your heart sing yet, maybe these next ones will. If you're really about a conceptual practice with your art, um, experimenting across techniques, learning new mediums, um, kind of, I always like to say basically telling the stories of our time um, and becoming a cultural influencer, um, I would really encourage you to explore areas, uh, not only like fine arts, but also even photography and film and video. Um, so these are majors that are passionate about having students explore things they've never tried before. So within fine arts, you may have a background in painting, drawing, uh, charcoal, uh, maybe even some sculpting or ceramics. Uh, we're going to help you take that to the next level. We're going to have you explore multimedia. Um, conceptual art, um, non-objective art. Uh, we have glass blowing facilities, metal working jewel uh, facilities, jewelry making facilities, uh, woodworking uh, shops. Um, so it, I don't know, when I describe it, it makes me really excited because I think about all the possible things you could like play with and get your hands on and learn and have it really kind of inform and add to your, your message as, a, as an artist. Um, certainly in photography and film, they're also really trying to bring students um, new ways of kind of bridging the past to now. Um, so in photography, students are certainly going to learn digital photography, but they're also going to learn, um, you know, traditional wet methods of producing black and white images um, and applying those images to more than just paper um, and moving out and beyond the screen, but rather to, you know, acrylic, to plastic, to wood, to apparel. Um, it's really interesting seeing how our photography students um, think in such uh, critical um, and creative ways uh, with their imagery. Um, and there's certainly lots of interesting little avenues within photography. Um, there's certainly portraiture, like this beautiful piece here. Um, there's, um, you know, fashion photography. There is product photography. There is nature photography. There is uh, journalistic newspaper style photography. Um, there's even a whole niche for food photography. <laughs> if you think about food blogs and food magazines and things like that, uh, cookbooks, um, it's crazy. Like each little avenue um, has so many opportunities. And with film and video, um, there is uh, much like photography, they have um, a great gear checkout booth, top notch cameras, um, top of the line cameras, um, filters, lighting, all the kind of set stuff you would need. Um, and we have two uh, large indoor uh, shooting facilities for photography and for film students with uh, white sweeps, green sweeps, blue sweeps. So if you're looking to experiment with, um, you know, kind of subbing in backgrounds or special effects, you could play with that too. Um, and so, yeah, again, so many opportunities for students to expand their knowledge 
and actually use really expensive high grade equipment um, that you essentially don't have to foot the bill for alone, right? That's kind of what we hope to bring to you as part of your investment in this education at CCAD is getting in your hands some really great equipment and mediums and materials that you otherwise might not have access to as an individual student. And so, you know, at CCAD, uh, we really realize that it's not just about what you know and the techniques and the cool tools you learn, but it's also about who you know. Um, and so I'm just so excited to continue to kind of introduce you to additional alumni of ours in these fields. Uh, you've got Maddie Etter, who is a um, jewelry designer. She founded her jewelry brand, Phyllis and Hazel. Megan Mathy discovered her love of glass blowing at, um, at CCAD. Um, and so that's really her bread and butter now. She makes these beautiful glass pieces that are sold across the country in galleries and museums. Um, and then you've got students like Angelo Thomas. He just graduated um, this May. And while he was still a student, he wrote um, a basically a kind of a semi-autobiographical novel called The Incredible Jake Parker. Um, he turned that into a screenplay and then he developed that into his senior thesis uh, full-length feature film. And that film was actually released uh, publicly um, this summer. And if you wanna check it out, again, there's a novel, you can read it or you can watch the movie or both. It's called The Incredible Jake Parker um, by Angelo Thomas. And then, you know, these two artists, um, Jessica Phelps coming from photography, Jake Mason Macklin coming from fine arts, they are so passionate about telling stories about their communities, so what's going on in their communities. Um, in really different methods. Jake is very multimedia. He works a lot of times with found objects and layering them, layering their textures and their context to tell a story. Uh, Jessica, um, she was, uh, she lived locally here, uh, not too far from Columbus in a, a more rural area called Newark, Ohio. She'd never really left uh, the area or even the state that much. But during her time as CCAD, she took full advantage of travel abroad opportunities um, and all the classes she could to just kind of learn and improve her craft and, and experiment and meet new people and go new places. Um, but it's interesting because when a position opened up in Newark, her hometown at the newspaper there, she actually jumped at the chance to take it. And it was really all the things she'd learned and seen during her time at CCAD um, that uh, really informed her work. And so she created this very recently, a, a beautiful series, a portfolio work that um, kind of followed the journey of a family seeking their citizenship here in the United States. Um, and it was actually that body of work that earned her the title of newspaper photographer of the year, uh, a year or two ago, and was even recognized by um, publications like the New York Times. So really incredible to see students um, you know, how their journey goes and where it takes them. Something else that we really want to make sure we help students do at CCAD, you know, beyond getting them into great studios and getting cool tools in their hand and, um, you know, using software and mediums that um, employers would expect them to know. Um, as I mentioned, you know, it's not just what you know, but it's also who you know. And so we want to help students collaborate uh, with their faculty, with alumni, and with um, top tier employers um, inside the classroom. So we actually have a whole series of corporate and community partnerships. Um, an entire office at CCAD is dedicated to helping bring these types of partnerships into the classroom. Um, so whether you're in industrial design, fashion design, graphic design, or photography, um, film, we have students uh, creating work um, brought to them by real world design studios, uh, agencies and employers, um, challenging them to think in really professional ways and also getting some really critical and exciting feedback back to the students. So that, you know, when you walk out of college, you feel truly prepared in every regard to be ready with your work, to have these conversations and dialogues um, with employers. And so you've got this, you know, these are some really great examples. Over here, this is a uh, student Peach Tao. She came to us from China. Her dress that you see here um, was created for a pattern drafting class in the fashion program. Um, it was kind of a challenge put forth by a plus size women's wear brand called Eloquy. And um, they're a fully online retailer. And Peach's dress kind of really caught their eye and won this competition. And her dress was featured on their website and sold out. Sold out. I think that's so cool to think of all these women across the country owning Peach's dress. Um, we have students tackling 
um, partnerships, um, kind of more community-based. Uh, we have industrial design students producing uh, furniture for the Mid-Ohio Furniture Bank. Uh, they have really interesting kind of cost and um, construction um, restrictions. So it's kind of like a, a puzzle to be, so to be solved. Industrial design students have also recently partnered um, with local agencies to design uh, 3D printed solutions, prosthetics for children uh, with uh, different needs and different physical abilities. Um, we have film students helping tell the stories of veterans and fine arts students also collaborating within um, in an art therapy way to help these veterans tell their stories. Um, so such exciting opportunities um, for students to network, but also to give back. And if you're thinking about art school, maybe versus like a big school experience with an art program, there's certainly some pros and cons to each. It's really about the type of college experience you're looking for. Uh, but statistically, if you wanna go into art and design, there's some really good uh, numbers in why you should go to art specific school. Honestly, you know, all the studios and facilities that I've mentioned, the faculty are all coming from backgrounds in art and design professionally. Many of them are actually still working actively while being professor. Um, and so, you know, typically we see art students respond with a really overall positive experience having gone to an art focused college. Um, I love this last statistic, 16% started their own businesses compared to only 4% of the general population. Again, I think if you think about a school like us, where you have the chance to have a creative major with a business minor, um, and so many makers have that little entrepreneurial gene, um, it really is the, great, the, the right place to kind of launch um, that, that brand or that small business um, that you might want to start. If that is not your thing and you want to work at like a big agency or kind of a household name studio um, or brand, we have alumni doing that too. All of the companies you see on the screen listed before you uh, currently employ CCAD alumni. So I've mentioned Walt Disney and Pixar along the way. We also have graduates at DreamWorks, um, Urban Outfitters, Ralph Lauren, Abercrombie & Fitch. Um, we have um, students working at Timberland and the 9-11 Memorial Museum and Target. Um, I mean, it's just an incredible list. And when I think about my own daily life, where I shop, brands I shop from, things I watch on Netflix or on Disney Plus at night to unwind, the magazines I flip through, the newspapers I read, it's incredible to think about all the artists and designers and even some of our alumni who are actually making choices of the things that I buy and the spaces that I go to and the, the visual um, information I take in. So this is our campus. We certainly have lots of ways for students to uh, have a great college experience and get involved outside of their academic and, and classroom experience. As I mentioned, we are a downtown campus. You can see some of the buildings here. If you were to walk down this little street behind the art sign and walk that way, it's actually one of the best views of downtown Columbus, um, in my opinion. Um, the green quad space is certainly really active. Uh, these pictures were certainly taken kind of pre-COVID times, um, but it is typically a great space when the weather's nice um, for students to head outdoors and relax in between classes and on weekends. We have a lot of great events um, from our annual fashion show uh, to Chroma, which is our big end of year celebration. Uh, we have lots of different clubs and organizations um, for students to get involved in, you know, whether you're interested maybe um, in joining a major collective. So having uh, freshmen and sophomore and juniors and seniors connect within a major so you can kind of learn from each other at different levels. Um, we, we offer those. We certainly have um, clubs uh, or maybe more oriented on uh, heritage, background, or ethnicity, you know, identity, um, so that you can kind of find common cultures and be introduced to other cultures. Um, also as well, we, we have a lot of clubs based on hobbies, maybe comics, maybe gaming, um, maybe costumes, um, and um, uh, I'm just trying to think of like gaming conventions and things like that. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. And if there isn't a club that already exists and you wanna make one yourself, we have a student engagement office and you can literally walk right up and let them know you wanna start a club and they will help you do that. 
We also offer two on-campus living um, residence hall options. Uh, we have uh, one residence hall that is typically reserved for first year new incoming students. It's called Schottenstein Hall and it's suite style living. So it's basically kind of like a shared common space in a bathroom with two bedrooms. Um, traditionally it's two students in each, so four total suite mates. Um, in the uh, other residence hall, it's, it's more apartment style. So there's actually like a kitchen. Um, students have individual bedrooms. Um, so we do have options. Um, and these are certainly things that are being explored again at this time. Uh, we are mostly online and virtual, um, but we are still able to offer some living uh, with some you know, uh, new requirements and such in these spaces. Um, but if you'd ever like to see inside of these residence halls, uh, we are offering virtual tours at this time where we can, um, as a counselor, kind of meet with you and one-on-one -on -one walk you through some of what the insides of these spaces uh, look like. As I mentioned, we're online at this time um, due to COVID uh, for the fall semester. Um, but uh, looking ahead to fall 2021 um, and not being sure what in-person will continue to look like, uh, we do plan to still offer an online option. So if you'd like to come and join us on campus, whatever that may look like, we'd love it. If you think that um, online feels uh, better and more right for you, we offer that for our first year students as well and we'll continue to. Um, so the classes that you'll take, they're listed over there to the right. Um, those are real classes, you know, doing your first year online, it's not going to be a bunch of filler classes or, or fluff classes. We've had students say like, yeah, but is it really going to count towards my degree? Absolutely. 100%. These are classes you'd be taking if you did do the in-person option. And, you know, whether you're doing online or you're doing in-person, one of the great things that I love most about CCAD is that first year students get to start their major of choice from their very first semester. Um, if you're comparing different art programs, different art institutions, this is a really good question to ask. When will I get to start my major? Um, some don't let students start till sophomore year. Um, some will make you apply to that, to that school or that major or that program separately. Um, it might become more of a hurdle than students sometimes expect. Um, but at CCAD, when you're admitted to the school, you're admitted to the major um, that you select and you will get to start classes in that major right from the get-go. So really exciting. So if you're out there and you might be feeling curious about us at CCAD, some possible next steps that you can take, there's certainly something that everyone can be doing. <coughs> Pardon me. So seniors, if you are a senior currently in high school, um, certainly visiting campuses um, at this time virtually uh, is um, a good thing to do. Also working on your portfolio. Uh, a portfolio is a required component of our application as is a written essay and your GPA. We are test optional, so ACTs and SATs are not required here um, at CCAD as part of the admissions process. Uh, but finalizing that portfolio, it's often the piece of the application we get the most questions about. Uh, what are we looking for? Uh, what should I include? Uh, is my work good enough? Uh, these are all questions we would love to answer individually with you, probably in a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Um, and my email address is e e llis at ccad.edu, so elis at ccad.edu. You could also email admissions at ccad.edu. Uh, we'd love to connect with you and set up an appointment to talk about your work with you. Uh, you could also attend a National Portfolio Day. This is also open to juniors, sophomores, and freshmen as well, because for you all, it is never too early to start building your portfolio and body of work and getting that critical feedback. Um, so National Portfolio Day, uh, typically uh, these are in-person events uh, where lots of different art programs and art schools and representatives to help students um, talk through their work um, and understand what criteria each school is looking for. Um, this year, everything's virtual. And so this is really cool because normally um, in Ohio, there'd be a National Portfolio Day in Cincinnati, maybe Cleveland, maybe Columbus, and it'd come like once for the year to your area. Um, but this time, because it's virtual, there's actually um, now over a dozen available and you could attend as many as you liked, um, you know, whatever fits your schedule from the comfort of your own home. So um, we'd love to connect with you at an NPD National Portfolio Day event. You can sign up online and uh, we'll be at uh, many still um, from now through next month um, and even into early December. 
If you're looking to apply, you can get started on your application um, on our website, ccad.edu uh, backslash apply. Uh, you can also apply through the Common App if you would prefer that method. I know that's become really, really popular. And our deadlines, um, we have two main deadlines, December 1st and February 1st. December 1st is our early deadline. I call this the peace of mind deadline. If you'd really like your admission decision and maybe even a scholarship decision before the winter holidays, um, then certainly shoot for that December 1st deadline. Um, if you'd like to maximize some portfolio editing time, um, you know, continuing to work hard in your classes and, and lift that GPA, you could certainly apply by our priority deadline, which is February 1st. As long as you apply by February 1st, you will be in full consideration of the widest range of scholarships we can possibly provide. So apply by February 1st um, and, and you'll be in the running. Last but not least, for seniors out there, you may be getting beaten over the head with it, information from counselors, <laughs> both from colleges and maybe within your high school, um, but the FAFSA uh, stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It is really important. It can seem a little nerve wracking. It is financially related. You'll need some tax info handy, probably your parents and or guardian as well. Uh, but if you both sit down and take about 30 to 40 minutes, it's done for the year. You can um, submit it to basically as many colleges as you wish to apply to. Um, and so it's very kind of like a one and done um, for the year. So um, FAFSA, again, you'll go to um, the internet. It's all done digitally. Um, and go to their official website and submit your information there. Um, and that will uh, basically hopefully unlock access to federal grants, state grants, institutional grants, free money, essentially, that you could qualify for uh, for college. It is also a really important first step if you're thinking of taking out student loans, possibly having to take out student loans, you'll need to do the FAFSA as well. So again, if you'd like to share a little bit of info about yourself with me, this is a great place to do so and tell me more about which majors may have resonated with you today and the information I shared and majors you'd like more info on or setting up that appointment or portfolio review. Again, we'd love to connect with you and share more about CCAD. Uh, but otherwise, you can, again, email myself, uh, eellis at ccad.edu or admissions at ccad.edu, as you see there before you. Um, now, the Q&A function is available in this seminar, so if anyone out there has any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. Again, you can just type them into the little Q&A kind of chat bubble looking icon there. Um, so I'm just going to pause for a moment, see if any questions do pop in, um, and I'd love to answer them. So it looks like one question came through about majors and minors. How many are you able to have? This is a great question. So at CCAD, we ask every student to choose at least one major. You can actually enter um, as a freshman as undeclared um, and kind of spend a semester or two experimenting, maybe taking a couple of different intros if you like, um, so that you can find out what you want to do. If you know again what you want to do, um, you can, like I said, tell us your major of choice. When you apply, we'll enroll you in that and you'll get to get started in that major from your very first semester. So every student should um, have one major. Um, if you are interested in double majoring, two majors, you can do so. Although I um, am always uh, quick to say and be very honest, art and design school is challenging. <laughs> it is rigorous. Um, and so depending on the two majors you choose, um, that might be, it might be a really synchronous um, choice and our academic advisors would help talk with you about navigating that, or it might be a choice that might lead to a lot of additional credits and hours. Um, again, your academic advisor would help talk with you about that and what that would look and feel like. Um, minors wise, you can have none, you can have one, you can have two. Um, I have certainly seen uh, students, depending on their electives and how many courses they have and credit hours they have, uh, select a major um, and then maybe do a minor in business and a minor in a different um, type of major. So you can minor in any of those minors that I listed before, creative writing, art therapy, um, copywriting, business, 
or you can choose to minor in any of our majors. I hope that kind of makes sense. So um, yeah, it's really up to each individual student. Again, we want to help make this academic experience individual to you and valuable to you. Um, so we'll help you have that conversation. Again, each student will be assigned an academic advisor to help them with that. I think that's all the questions we've had come in. I would like to thank you for joining us today. After you close your presentation, you will see a quick four question survey. Keep in mind that there are more sessions available at oacac.org. The recording for this presentation will be available in about a week. Thank you so much and good luck with your college search.